c4, knight f6. So usually knight c3 is common here, but white played g3, e5, bishop g2, d5. So black takes the classical center. Take, take, knight c3. Okay. So now there are a couple of possible moves. Um, you could play c6, but it's kind of passive. This knight doesn't get a good square if you play c6. You could play bishop e6, uh, but after knight f3, oops, knight c6, castle, bishop e7, d4, it's an accelerated dragon reversed, but white has an extra tempo, so this is favorable for white. And if you take this, I get a very strong center, and you really have nothing in return for it. This pawn is going to come under fire, a rook b1 is going to come, and this is good for white as well. So really the only thing black can do here is to move this knight. And so where does this knight go, guys? Where does this knight go? So I told you he doesn't take the knight. But you have, you know, four options, possibly. You're going to go here, go here, you go here, you go back. So which one's the best square? Which one's the best square? All right, so yeah, so you guys need to get familiar with these positions, even if you don't play this opening, because this type of stuff happens a lot. So the right square is indeed b6, okay? So what's the reason for that? Well, usually in these types of positions, white will attack with his queenside minority, two against three. So a, a, minority, a minority attack, and therefore black's going to be countering on the king side. And so you want to have this pawn free for an eventual f5 if possible. Uh, also, knight f6 kind of undevelops the knight, like you're moving it back to the square it came from. Whereas on b6, now you're kind of looking at the square c4, for example. And also... You're keeping on the queen side to kind of hinder uh, white's plans. So yeah, I mean, knight f6, I mean, it's a move, but uh, white definitely has a small edge here. Again, you'd play knight f3, knight c6, castle, bishop e7, and d3, castle. And now, this knight looks kind of silly, because now, what is black's plan really here? I mean, white has a simple plan. He wants to play a3, b4, and b5. But black's plan is not so clear. Like, his pieces look fine, but, like, this knight can't move because this pawn is weak. And you'd have to move this knight anyway to defend this pawn, like an eventual f6 or something. So this knight is actually poorly placed there. So that's just, that just comes from experience and knowing the position. So b6 is the correct square. Yeah, it's still playable, but it's worse. Definitely not theoretical whatsoever. So knight b6 here. Yeah, you could think it looks silly, but you'll see. Okay, so so what does white do here? I mean, this is pretty obvious, but sometimes what I think is obvious, you guys don't think is obvious. So what does white play here? This is something that anyone who's reasonably proficient should, you know, be pretty up. It should be pretty clear. Yeah. You don't want to do anything fancy. It's, it's not a trick question. You just want to develop. Yeah. So knight f3, right. No, no problems. You just want to 
get castled and develop this knight. So you don't want to be making any pawn moves here. So a3 is too premature, as well as e3. e3, now you got this big hole here. So you don't want to you don't want to create any weaknesses unless you absolutely have to. And really, you just want to be developing here. Yeah, so you don't want to play e3, you don't want to play a4, you don't want to play a3. You just want to develop, most important. If you play e3, this, this, this square becomes a huge problem. For example, black can play like queen d3 right away. And now this is kind of awkward for you. You know, if knight e2, knight c6, castle, knight b4, and this square is, is, is kind of an issue. So you kind of have to go through some sort of bishop e4, you know, and all your pieces are kind of jumbled up. But I'm not even saying this is black's best idea, it's just something he can do. So yeah, e3 is not something you want to do here. So knight f3. Okay. So knight c6. Okay, now what does white do here? So you just want to castle. Yep. All right. So castle bishop b7. Now, this position should look very familiar to most of you who watch my games. What opening does this look very familiar to? If the, uh, if the colors were reversed. Yeah, a Sicilian, exactly. No, 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 he's right. It's a Sicilian. Yeah, it's a dragon, more specifically. So this is a classical dragon right here. So the same ideas that black would have in the dragon, white is going to use here. This is the dragon bishop. So again, usually in a dragon, you go for you know a6 and b5. So here, it's a3 and b4, same idea. And black, in the, you know, or, or white in the dragon usually either plays f3 or f4 and then just, you know, puts a bishop on e3, queen on d2, but here bishop on e6, queen on d7, and rook on d1, rook on d8, and just controls the center. So again, because this pawn is really the only pawn that's in the center right now. So again, what's, what's white going to be doing? White's going to be trying to use the fact that this file is half open and going to try to get this pawn to b5 to undermine this knight so that this pawn will be weak. And in addition, after getting this pawn to b5 and this knight moving, this bishop will be exposed to this pawn if this knight moves. Also, white can maybe play for an eventual d4 to exploit a clumsy placement of black's pieces if black's kind of overextends himself to, to stop these queenside plans. So white has a few options here. And black having the central pawn usually means that <coughs> he's going to want to attack on the king side. Um, but if he overextends with f5 a little too early, this pawn could come under pressure because now this pawn on f file will not be able to defend this pawn on e5. So if you play f5, you're never going to be able to play f6, obviously, because pawns can't move backwards. So you have to be careful about that. Um, as well, there's going to be, if, if you move this pawn, there's going to be some weakness on along this diagonal. So oftentimes there's, you know, some sort of queen b3 check idea, and then maybe picking up this pawn, like if this knight was moved and this bishop was moved, something like that. So... So in the, in the Sicilian, white actually does want to often play f4. But here, since it's reversed, um, the tempo matters. And so black has to be a little more cautious and not so aggressive because he's down a full move on what he'd normally have if he was, you know, white, on the white side of a dragon. Okay. Is, this all, is all that clear so far? Okay, 
So let's say, what should white do here? Given everything I just said, what should white do here? No particularly star move here, but what what would you be doing as white here? So the normal and natural move in this position would be d3, right? Getting this bishop out, uh, controlling these two squares. And indeed, this is a perfectly sensible move, perfectly good move. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It's, it's fine. Um, however, as most of you noted, this move actually doesn't need to be played. You know, like, e4 is not a threat because this knight defends it. Um, and it's actually not clear that this bishop wants to develop along this diagonal. It may be the case that this bishop actually wants to develop along this, this diagonal. Uh, so, uh, often in these, you know, opposite wing attacks, speed is important. So, you know, even though you're not attacking a king here, you're just, you're just kind of getting your pawns rolling on the queen side, uh, you know, better to get it rolling sooner rather than later. So another perfectly viable possibility would be to play a3 like you guys said immediately. So you're basically just trying to get b4, b5 in as soon as possible. Okay, so let's just look at a3 first because actually in the game white ended up playing d3, but um, but a3. Okay, so first let's look at, so oftentimes I notice in games, you know, when when white plays a3, what does black what does black immediately respond with? Right, a5. Okay. So this move obviously stops b4, right? Because you you know. Take, I can't even take back because my rook hangs, right? Okay. So the question is here, okay, now that now that a3, a5 has been played, is white just going to give up all hope and, you know, say, okay, well, I guess I'm done on the queen side? Or, or what, what should white be doing here? What should white be doing here? So same plan being what? Okay, so see, now you guys have to be more flexible. This is this is a, a very important point. So so okay, so if 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 our plan is to play a three b four, but on a three he can just play a five and stop b four, thus forcing us to continue with the same plan, but only by playing b three. It can't be the right plan, right? Because why would we even play a3 then to begin with? Like, if we know that he can just stop it with a5, why would we play a3 to begin with? So you have to you have to think about not only what good a5 does, but what bad a5 does. So if 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 a5 only had positive benefits. why would we play a3? Like, we're just forcing him to make a good move, basically, right? So, right, so part, part 